Hi guys, welcome back. The Garmin Instinct 2 X. Thought I'd take a look at this. It hasn't been getting that much attention, which I'm kind of surprised about. And I want to give you guys an idea of whether this is the watch to buy from Garmin if you haven't used one of their watches before. And if you do currently own a Garmin, whether this is worth the upgrade, because a lot of people might look at this and think, you know, I might move over to that. And there's some reasons why you might want to do that. And there's also some reasons why you might not. So to get started, I am normally a user of this Garmin Instinct 2, which is a 45 mil bezel. And as you guys have probably seen from a number of my videos, I use that to track all my fitness stats in the Garmin Connect app. And that's vital for me, you know, being a middle-aged guy, I'm, I'm training pretty hard. Uh, I'm not a professional athlete these days by any means, but I'm, you know, I'm competitive. I'm above average, certainly in the lifting side of things. And I'm trying to be above average in my cycling on Zwift. I'm not a road cyclist. I only do the Zwift stuff. Uh, and that taxes my body pretty hard, you know, between pretty hard lifting regime and then caning it on the cardio. I have to be really careful not to overtrain because as we get older, that becomes more and more of a problem. So I love these Garmin watches because if you guys have seen the Connect app, it will give you all kinds of stats on there. You know, your HRV, your training readiness, all kinds of stuff. And I'll talk about some of this when I talk about this Instinct X because some of the features that people are talking about of this watch uh, are kind of, um, at first they were available on this model only, but it seems to be moving over towards some of the other Instinct models as well. So some of those features you might actually be able to get on your current Instinct too, if that's what you're running, like me. So, would I buy this as a brand new customer to Garmin? Yes, I absolutely would. One of the things I haven't been that happy about with my original purchase, which was this Instinct 2, I didn't go for the solar option. I just went for the standard option. Uh, it was on a deal, you know, I got it on a, a Black Friday sale and it happened to be the one on, the, on a really good deal. And it's a little bit disappointing in battery life. Sometimes when I go away, I find that, you know, it starts getting low on batteries and it's got a quirky shaped uh, USB charger that it comes with. And if you haven't packed that in your suitcase, you're not going to get the thing charged up. It's like a, a four pin thing. They all have the same. You can see it on the back there. It just plugs in there. So it's not your standard USB-C or whatever. It's a special type from Garmin. You can buy them online really cheap. Uh, but I even normally forget my phone cables when I go away and normally I'm sort of blagging a USB-C off someone or going and buy it from a local shop. So that's something a couple of times where I've been out at work, staying in uh, tents, you know, in the middle of nowhere on shooting ranges and stuff. And I just have found that, that that's a slightly annoying. It's a little bit my fault. You know, I should have charged it fully up before I go, but these things happen. So I kind of wished that I'd bought the solar model. And if I could have turned back the clock, I would have definitely gone for the solar. But what I would do now is actually buy this model because the difference in price between the Instinct X and the Instinct 2 solar is minimal. You know, I, I, I'm, I actually think I've seen them at pretty much the same price. And it looks like it's Garmin's intention to kind of replace the Instinct 2 with the X model completely. So there's number one reason that I would buy it, that I would definitely go for a solar model in. If you're doing that, it's just financially sensible to get this one. Number two is the aesthetics. So this is a 45 mil bezel, and this one here is a 50 mil. And then you can see there's a noticeable difference in the thickness as well. It's just a bigger watch altogether. And the face of it, it looks a bit more robust around the bezel. It's got those sort of screws in there that give it a bit more of a tactical look compared to this one. And I've got fairly big wrists. So uh, I just think it looks a lot better. 
I think the strap is a bit wider, so you've got also a bit more options to buy other straps for this in case you want to buy sort of a uh, a webbing type strap or anything like that. But it looks a lot better on my wrist, and I prefer a chunkier watch. You know, they're both rugged, they're both hard wearing. I've got no complaints about my other one, but I just think this looks really, really nice. Third reason, and this is a, a kind of a deal breaker for me, and I would not have thought that it would be so important. At first, I thought this was a bit of a gimmick. Uh, the watch comes with a light. You can see there. Now, you might think, well, why on earth? Would that be any use whatsoever? You know, I'm a guy that carries around tactical flashlights. You know, I've always got one in my pocket. I've got one in my range bag. You know, I've got one in another bag that I carry that's got some tools in it. And I thought, oh, well, I'll probably not get any use out of that. Actually, I'm using this all the time. I use it multiple times a day. So it's just so easy to access, you know, especially at night. If I get up at night and I want to go to the loo or I want to go and get a drink or anything like that, instead of going through the house and turning each light on and off as I go through the rooms and then worrying about the wrath of my uh, partner waking up and absolutely killing me for, you know, blinding her with the light in the bedroom, I get to just switch this little watch light on and I can actually see my way through. I don't have to turn the toilet light on so i'm not waking myself up because that's the other issue at night you know if you turn all these lights on you start actually waking up a lot and it's hard to get back to sleep again and that's one of the things i've learned with training is as we get older it's absolutely vital to get enough sleep you know that's been the difference of really successful training to me and really poor quality training that when i've had disturbed nights and i haven't had a a good amount of deep sleep and stuff my training suffers badly the next day and sometimes you know uh, i'm just not able to train properly at all because i'm absolutely exhausted by the end of work in the evening and these watches will track your sleep i, I made a video on that already about how i use the original garmin that i bought the instinct to to track all my sleep patterns and it was actually showing me that i was having some issues at night which I was able to kind of take a deeper look at and find that I was uh, doing a lot of mouth breathing at night. And I remedied that. I actually used surgical tape to tape my mouth up for a few weeks. And I got into the habit of nose breathing again at night. And now I'm having much better sleep. So I've got the watch to thank for that. Both of these watches pretty much replicate those sort of functions. Now, the interesting thing was when the Garmin Instinct X came out, it was lauded to have some extra functions, you know, like a training readiness function, which basically gives you a really easy to read, uh, you know, a, a number that comes up on there that will let you know how ready you are for training on that given day. It's very useful, again, especially for us middle-aged people. And at first that was only available on the Instinct 2X but I've since read that you can also do that with the Instinct 2 now because that's had a software update. And the same thing goes for the morning wake-up routine. That that was uh, a new thing out on this watch, and I think that's been rolled out to the other models now as well. So that's pretty handy. It wakes you up. It tells you straight away if you've had a good night's sleep, and then it runs through some of the stuff like your training readiness score, your HRV, your blood ox, you know, all these different health signs that you need to be keeping an eye on. And that's handy because you used to have to wait quite a while uh, for the watch to kind of compute all that stuff after you'd woken up in the morning. So it would log that you had kind of woken and then it would take like half an hour or more to give you a sleep score and stuff like that. So if you're going to work and you want to read all that stuff beforehand, you've got easy access to it on that morning routine. So I, I do like that as well. But back to the light. So the light actually has four power modes. I've got it set on power mode three. If you hold the top left button, it will take you to the, the main screen where you can scan through to torch, select that with the top right, 
and then you can actually run through the modes so it does have a a green light which i think is prominent for this tactical version and if you don't get the tactical version i think they may have a red light don't quote me on that i'm pretty sure that's the case though and then you have three different powers on there so that's the lowest up again and then to the highest and then the highest and i've found the highest is actually too bright at night for me you know it's um illuminating pretty much the whole room which you wouldn't think from the size of this watch but yeah it really does so that is fantastic i wouldn't go back to my old watch now after having used that it's such a useful function now this tactical version does come with some other functions that may interest people that are you know operators and actually serving so it comes with like a kill mode which will delete all the data in the watch like gps points and stuff like that it comes with a night vision mode so you can actually read the screen through nvgs night vision goggles it comes with a jump master mode which is used for people that are into parachute jumping and it does some calculations for those guys it comes with a stealth type mode which actually could be handy for anyone so i work in a uh, defense job and sometimes we have to make sure that any electronic equipment we're using isn't sending out any signals because that could have some sort of explosive risk a bit like the old don't use your mobile phones near the petrol station type of thing and we have to turn some of that stuff off so normally people with digital watches just have to take the watch off and leave it outside i can actually just switch that mode on and stop my watch from transmitting any sort of data whatsoever so pretty handy for me but still might be somewhat niche for most people you know it really depends on your own personal circumstance i think the most niche mode in this watch and something i was very interested in was the applied ballistics part i wasn't actually expecting it to come with applied ballistics and for those of you who don't know what that is it's basically a ballistic calculator that allows you to compute bullet drop at long ranges so it would be used for long range target shooters or if you were an operator and you were doing a, a sniper role you would use it for that now the issue i've got with that and this is one of the the negatives is that if you want to use the applied ballistics function on this watch you have to download an app called applied ballistics sign ups onto your phone and then they ask you to pay some money which i wasn't expecting and i was going to do a review of this watch based on that a ballistics app because i am a ballistician so it would have been kind of handy now the applied ballistics app i already have it and the app itself cost me 30 pounds which i use on my phone i've also got an applied ballistics app as part of my wind reading equipment on a, something called a kestrel which is an anemometer that comes with the app built into it and then i've got access to a couple of other apps on my pc etc so i've got lots and lots of access to ballistics apps and anyone can at a pretty cheap price like i say the applied ballistics one if you just get the app for your phone it's 30 quid now if i download the synapse app and i want to give this thing the ability to run ballistics charts I have to pay a hundred dollars and it will only run charts out to about 800 yards which any long range shooter will tell you is pretty much useless everyone wants data way beyond 800 yards you know that's really your kind of starting distances almost that's not considered to be long range shooting by most snipers or target shooters so if you want to kick out further than that you've got to go for the next option above which is a crazy amount of money i think it's 300 dollars and given the fact that i've already got all that information on my phone for 30 pounds like why on earth would i pay 300 dollars to see it on my wristwatch as well so that's the kind of downside i'm guessing that's some sort of licensing issue between applied ballistics and garmin and that it just hasn't been completely inbuilt into the watch they're kind of relying on dragging that data through so i'd imagine applied ballistics are kind of driving the price point for that so i don't hold the blame at garmin's feet i just wish applied ballistics 
would put their pricing in line with what shooters are already doing with their app. You know, if it was 30 quid, I would have bought it straight away just for the kind of novelty of getting it on there so I could review it. And also it'd be handy to have on there so that when I'm shooting, I can just look down at my watch, pull the data off that instead of actually having to carry my phone to the firing point or whatever. So that would have been nice, but that's really my only grumble. So who should upgrade to this watch? If you're like me and you bought the Instinct 2 and you're looking for something that has some more battery power, then I definitely think this is worth the upgrade. In fact, I will be upgrading. There's no doubt about it. The amount of battery life I get in this dwarfs what I get on my Instinct 2. I think on that one, I get about 10 days, something like that. And then on this one, I get about 40 plus days. And that is highly dependent on the weather, obviously. You know, it will go up if I'm in bright sunlight. We've just had the wettest uh, July and we're starting to have the wettest August on record. Uh, we haven't got any um, global warming here, unfortunately. We've just got lots and lots of rain, and it's pretty cold for the summer. So it's probably not ideal testing times at the moment, but it certainly is eclipsing my other watch in terms of battery life. And that's part of the reason why the watch is thicker and bigger, is so it's going to accommodate that extra battery life. And if that wasn't enough, obviously, like I said, you've got the light function, which I know seems like it's a, a gimmick, but I honestly advise you to check it out and you will not regret that. Now, if you've already got an instinct to solar, that's where things might get a bit tricky because I think you're probably quite happy with your battery life already. You know, it's not as good as the X. You are going to gain if you buy into the X model, but there's not a stark difference like I've got with my Straight Instinct 2. So you might find that weighing in your old Instinct 2 solar and getting a kind of half price on it on eBay or something, and then having to invest again in the Instinct 2X, that might not be the most sensible financial deal in the whole world. You might want to consider that unless you really, really need those tactical features and the solar that you have currently isn't the tactical model and you really require the stuff that's on there. You know, you're doing parachute jumping or you're, you know, an operator that's in need of some of those more uh, niche features, then it would definitely be worth buying into. If you're a user of an Instinct, the original model, I would definitely say upgrade, you know, because you've got a choice of basically the Instinct 2 or the Instinct 2X. And I would just straight upgrade to the Instinct 2X or the tactical model, whichever you fancy. I quite like the tactical model just in terms of the, the green light on there because I do a bit of hunting and the green light's really, really useful for us hunters because it is not as easily seen by a lot of the stuff that we're hunting. Uh, for some reason certain animals see in, in a contrast manner and the green light casts a lot less contrast than the standard white light does so I actually find that quite useful. If you've got uh, any of the older sort of standard Garmin running and cycling watches uh, I'm not going to go through them all but obviously you guys will know if you've got a watch that's kind of on the sub 200 pound budget mark you know Garmin have got quite a few watches that fit into that that are just basic smart watches that lack a lot of the functionality of these then again I would definitely upgrade to the 2x because the difference between the 2 and the 2x cash wise for the solar models is nothing whatsoever you know so that, that seems to be the the go-to watch there if you're a female you might want to have a look at the Instinct 2 model that's the S model, which is the smaller of the two bezels. I think that's a 40 mil bezel compared to the other one in the Instinct 2 range, which is the 45 mil bezel, which is this one here. That's a 45. We said that's the 50, that's the largest. And the S model is a 40 mil bezel. So if you're a female that wants a smaller watch, or if you're a guy with particularly small hands and wrists and you just feel that that looks better that's obviously the model that you're going to go for 
if you've got sort of average to large size wrists, then I would definitely, definitely recommend that you go for the 2X. I think it looks so much better. So in summary, Instinct 2X, fantastic watch. If you're new to Garmin, a new customer, get this watch, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. If you're an Instinct or an Instinct 2 non-solar model owner, then I would definitely upgrade to this watch, no questions asked. Uh, it does so much more and it looks really good on the wrist. If you're an Instinct 2 solar owner, that's where the question gets a little bit more difficult. You will have to think about how much you value possibly tactical features if you wanted to go over to the tactical model or how much you value that flashlight, which I do a lot, but I don't know if I value it enough to kind of cost myself another two, maybe 300 pounds in trading my old watch in and then buying a new one again. And if you're a user of any of the much older Garmin watches, you know, some of the, the more budget uh, fitness watches that they've released, then again, yes, this is a definite. So recommended by me, this is gonna be my go-to watch from now on. If I move to anything else, it'll be another Garmin and it'll be when I've had some sort of uh, bonus or some sort of win of something and I'll look into getting a Phoenix or an Epix or a Tactics or, or one of those higher end models. But now we're talking, you know, approaching the thousand pound mark. So that's a considerable amount of money for me to, to drop on a watch, despite the fact I use it all the time and it's probably now responsible for a good part of my health and safety when it comes to exercising. And uh, I'm very, very reliant on it to make sure I don't overtrain and I don't give myself any injuries. So in that manner, you know, it's probably worth investing in something expensive. But at the same time, I'm incredibly happy with this Instinct 2X. So I've really got no reason to move from there at the moment. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope that's been of some help to you and it's given you an idea of whether or not you should move over to this platform. If you have any questions about the watch, shoot me them down below. If you want to know real detailed information about this, there's a guy called DC Rainmaker who does like a sort of step-by-step -step guide to every single feature of these watches. I think he's done pretty much everything in the Garmin range. So you can go on there. He's like the user manual of Garmin. So check that out. I'll chuck a link down below. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. I know I always moan about it at the end, but I really, really need as many subscribers as possible. Thank you very much to those who have already subscribed. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next week.